Serbos policy decision points, how it works. Hey here, Alex from Serbos, and in this video, we're gonna quickly run through it, a typical request lifecycle and how Serbos helps your application deliver those fine-grained authorization checks using policy rather than application code and how all that fits inside of your infrastructure. So it all begins with your client application. This could be a web app, it could be a mobile app, it could be a, a service account hitting an API, but there's some client making a request to your system. So that request will come in through typically your API gateway and into your environment. Now Serbos is agnostic, it can run in pretty much any environment out there today. So whether you're in Kubernetes, you're on bare metal, you're in cloud, hybrid cloud, serverless architectures, Serbos can run inside of your system and that's important for security and latency reasons. So that request comes in, it gets routed down to your actual application, which is going to be handling that request, your, your service that's going to have that request handler inside of it. And at that point, you really know a couple of things. First off, you know the identity of the user making the request. And typically this is a user, but equally it could be a non-human uh, identity. It could be those service accounts or another microservice identity. Um, and that's going to be authenticated and you're going to have some sort of token or, or session cookie or such uh, from an, uh, typically an identity provider uh, of which servers can work with any provider out there and to get back that user profile. So their ID, their teams, their roles, their groups, um, whatever further attributes you store about them. The second thing your application is going to know is what resource are they trying to access. And your application service is most likely going to be only the particular resource. So if this is like an HR system, you might have an employee record. If it's an ERP system, you might have a purchase order inside of there. And then based on the request, you also know what action a user is trying to do against it. Are they trying to create, read, update, delete are the common ones? But Serverless is actually open-ended and can support higher level functions or actions such as approve, deny, comment, flag, or, or whatever the business actions are inside of the system. Now, inside your application code, what you typically do is have a lot of if-else statements. So if user role equals admin, then allow the request. If user role equals manager, then only allow the request under some circumstances. And that hard-coded logic will kind of be sprinkled around your application code and gets kind of hard to manage and maintain. The Cerberus approach here is to decouple or externalize all that authorization logic out into a policy decision point of which Cerberus is one of those. So in your application, you implement the Serverless SDK, or you can even call the API directly. We have SDKs for pretty much every language uh, that's commonly used out there today, um, but you can always just use the API underneath. And in your application code, at the point when you do those permission checks, rather than having all that hard-coded logic, you just make a call out to the Serverless decision point running alongside the application. And in the request, you pass along the subject, the action, and the resource. So the subject is the identity, you know, it's that user or it's that non-human identity. Um, that's coming through, their attributes, team group, roles, IDs, those kind of uh, metadata and directory information. What action they're trying to do? So they're trying to create, read, update, delete, approve, comment, flag, and then to which resource? So they're trying to do that action on a particular purchase order that's in this team and this group has these identifiers and these attributes. That request comes over into the Serbos instance, and then that Serbos instance has loaded into it policy. So Serbos policies are YAML definition files that define the different kinds of resources inside of your system, the different actions that can be done on that resource and under which condition. And this is where you can do your simple role-based checks. So to do the view action, you must have the role of user, um, or you can do much more fine-grained uh, attribute-based checks where, for example, the edit action should only be allowed if the user's role is manager and the owner ID of the resource is equal to the ID of the manager making the request. And that gets defined as static policy files. And because they're static, you can store them in a Git repo, a cloud storage bucket on disk, though we do also support database backends. And more importantly, because they're static, you can also write tests against them. So as part of the Serverless Open Source project, we also provide the testing framework. So you can write full test suites against your authorization logic to find example uh, subjects and resources and expected allow and deny decisions and run that as part of your CI pipeline. And then our Serverless Playground, it gives you an, an IDE style experience to actually work and edit those policies. Ultimately, those policies are, are stored and loaded into the policy decision point. So those policy decision points are deployed with pointers to where those policy files are stored, and the policy decision point will pull down and store the latest versions of those policies. So that request has come in. It's got subject, action, resource. Can they do this particular action? Serverless will then evaluate those policies. It will come up with a decision. It will create an audit log of that decision. At this time, this subject tried to do this action on this resource, and it was allowed or denied by this particular policy. And that audit log will they get outputted and your logging infrastructure can pick that up for further analysis. And then what comes back to your application, in most cases, is just a simple allow or deny. Uh, but we also support more advanced use cases where you want to do database level filtering and get back a set of query criteria or essentially the where clause 
to apply to your data layer based on those policies. You're only going to return the data back from your database, uh, which that user would have a particular permission to. So now back in your application, you've got back from Cerbos that allow or deny decision inside of your application code before where you had that if else star logic. It's now a single if statement. If Cerbos says allow, do the action. If not, return some sort of error or unauthorized message uh, back to the user. And then your application kind of works uh, as normal from there. So the key thing here is we've externalized the authorization logic out into policy. And the po Cerbos policy decision point, which is running again right alongside your application in your environment, is going to evaluate those policies and come up with a decision. So when those business requirements change or the authorization logic needs an update, there's a single point you go and update it, which is in your policy store, your policy repository, all your service policy decision points will get that update. And now any part of your application architecture, uh, every service, every batch job, like the async uh, processing uh, pr system in the back end, as long as it's doing those checks against Cerberus, it's going to work consistently and deliver the same level of authorization across your entire stack, all driven by the Cerberus policy decision point that's running local to your environment.